Yes. Good evening, everybody. This is Gertrude Bache here in beautiful Melbourne, Australia. It gives me great pleasure to come back and share with you my experience in diversity and compassionate communication. And hopefully by sharing a few of my life experiences, I'll be able to transfer to you what has been my experience in this field. So, have you ever gone to a meeting that ended up in an argument where people were not getting on, messages were being missed, and it was a total disaster? This happens a lot, not just in the workplace, not just at school, but it can also happen in organizations or in families. And it happens when the team or the family are struggling to communicate with empathy. Hence, the communication is totally ineffective. So I want to talk a little bit about empathetic communication. So imagine if someone on your team fails to communicate because they have a stutter or English is not their first language, or they do speak English, but a different type of English. So I am from Zimbabwe originally. I moved to New Zealand 21 years ago. Thought I knew how to speak English until I got to New Zealand. Now, the New Zealand Kiwi accent is very, very different from British English. And the most difficult thing for somebody who speaks English as a second language is when you're not able to lip read. And I didn't even know that I did this very intuitively. A lot of the way that I take in information when I'm talking to first English speakers is I look at their lips and I can make out the words by the way they move their mouths. Now, New Zealanders unfortunately speak very fast. They do not move their lips. And I felt like I had come into a country where people didn't speak English and they were actually speaking English. So although you might have studied in an English speaking country and you think you understand the language, a lot of language is communicated not just by the words that are coming out of somebody's mouth, but the body language, the lips, pay a huge part in communication as well. So that was my experience when I got to New Zealand. It actually shocked me because I didn't expect that. So I managed to develop empathy at a very early age in life. I grew up in a country called Rhodesia, which was a British colony. And I went to an all girls private school from the age of six. Now in Rhodesia at the time, we had an apartheid system where black people and white people didn't mix and English was not my first language. So I experienced apartheid from a very early age. My sister and I were the only two black kids in every single school I went to. And the other kids in those schools did not like me. It was very isolating, very lonely. I didn't have any friends and I really felt that I was different. I had the wrong skin color, everybody else was white, and I was totally not accepted in that environment as a child. Now, my parents went through a similar thing. My father got a scholarship to go to London to study to become a chartered accountant. So he took his young wife, my mother became a nurse, my dad became a chartered accountant. When they came back to Rhodesia, before Zimbabwe had independence, my dad could not get a white collar job despite having all of these qualifications from the UK, nobody would employ him. So he had to work in a chicken slaughtering factory until Zimbabwe got independence almost five years later. So I managed to get my first job in a very unusual way. From the age of 16, my father would put me on the bus every single school holiday and send me to the city. And he will tell me to apply for jobs, but not take them. Now I'd say, dad, why do I have to do that? 
And my dad would say the corporate world is white. When you're going to look for that first job, you need to be confident. You need to stand up in front of white people and speak. That's how I got a job in IT. I became a COBOL programmer and it shaped my career. But as I was rising through different organizations, I experienced again discrimination based on the fact that I was a woman, I was black, and I was in the IT field, which was very, very male dominated. I remember getting a job in South Africa in Cape Town. I was a systems analyst at the time. I was a project manager. And my boss, before we had tea or coffee, if we were breaking during a meeting, would look to me and say, get rid it's time for tea and coffee now. And what he actually was implying was that I had to go and make tea and coffee for everybody else. And it was mostly because the black woman in South Africa was a domestic servant. She would be the cleaner in any organization. And he knew my qualifications. He knew that I wasn't the cleaner, but he still treated me like the help. And I turned it into a bit of a joke. If he did that, I would say, yes, Jack, I take my coffee black with two sugars, please. And I would cross my legs and expect him to go and get my coffee for me. And everybody would laugh. And I broke his cycle of victimization and abuse by making it funny and getting people to laugh at him. So sometimes you have to kill people with kindness when you find yourself getting the communication in a very aggressive way, abrasive way. And that's what I experienced when I worked in apartheid South Africa. I experienced this when I traveled, you know, like normally when you're on an airplane, doesn't matter which country you're going to or coming from, there's very few black people on the plane. And the way we are treated is completely different from other people of other skin tones. And you can feel it just through the body language. So body language, like I said earlier, is a very, very big part of communication. So what is empathy? Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. So it's not about how you feel. It's about understanding how the other people or the other person is feeling at that given time. And there's two types of empathy. There's affective empathy, which is emotional empathy. And this is inherent in all human beings. This is when we react to each other. If you see somebody who's crying, you give them a tissue and you comfort them. If you see somebody who's smiling, you smile back. Then there's cognitive empathy. And this is the perspective where you are taking the other's perspective, not yours. You're putting yourself in somebody else's shoes deliberately to try and see how it would feel if it was you. Now, sympathy focuses on your perspective, whereas empathy focuses on the other person's perspective. So whenever you catch yourself thinking, oh, I feel sorry for that person, you're being sympathetic not empathetic. And it's very, very easy to stop yourself in, the, in your tracks when you feel yourself feeling sorry for somebody else. So here's a really good example. Saying, I'm sorry that you're sad. That is sympathy. Saying, I understand why you're sad and I'm here for you is empathy. There's a very big difference between those two statements. So empathy is not an opportunity to make the conversation about you. It's always about the other person and the other person's perspective. And you have to learn to communicate with others in a way that works best for them and not for you. It's always about the other. So for empathetic communication, you need to have a solid foundation. Just like if you are building a house, you need to draw the plans of that house. 
before you start laying the bricks, before you put the roof. You need to have a solid foundation. And I'm going to give you a few tips on how to create that solid foundation towards empathetic communication. So you can practice empathy in a number of ways. First way is to observe communication behaviors of others. That's really important just to be quiet, not to say anything, but just watch. An example is observing eye contact. Now, eye contact in different cultures can mean different things. In some cultures, if you look somebody directly in the eyes, it's disrespectful. In most Asian communities and African communities, it's disrespectful to look at somebody who's older than you directly in the eye. So the tendency is to put your head down. In the Western world, it's the exact opposite. So is the person avoiding eye contact? And how is person B reacting? So you also have to be sensitive to the cultural perspective of the other person when it comes to eye contact and take that into consideration as well. Observe communication behavior of others and focus on listening. A lot of times people listen to be heard. They don't listen to hear. And by that, I mean, when somebody is saying something to you, you're already thinking about your answer to what they've said. And you haven't fully taken in what it is they're saying. You're already ready with your answer. So focus on empathy, on, on listening. It's very, very good just to be quiet and take things in before you react and respond. So observe the communication between others, focus on listening, and then paraphrase. Now, paraphrasing is very powerful. When somebody says something to you, you repeat what they've said. You can say something like, so am I understanding correctly what you mean is, and then you repeat the words that they've said. Now, if you've got it wrong, the person will tell you, no, what I actually mean is this. So it's really important to paraphrase what other people have said to make sure that you've understood what they're trying to communicate. So ask other centered questions. Remember how I said, it's all about the other person. If you want to practice empathy, it's not about you. It's always about the other person that you're communicating with. So here's another really good example. You're in a meeting. I love your idea to go over part three of the project with the rest of the team. Which sections do you think we should emphasize? Now, it's really important to give the other person an opportunity to express where they feel the emphasis is. It makes them feel valued. It makes them feel heard. It makes them think, wow, this person really values my contribution to this conversation. So the benefits of asking others to share is multiple. They'll ask you to share too. They'll be more likely to listen to you. And they may incorporate your ideas in the plan. So it benefits you when you do this. So determine if you've perceived your perceived communication style matches your actual communication style. Now, we all have a perception of ourselves and how we communicate, but the way it lands for other people could be totally different. So how do you find out whether your perception of your communication style is what's actually being received? Formal reviews are a really good way of getting feedback. So you could be in a meeting, you could give people a feedback form, get them to review what has actually happened with a project, with a meeting, whatever it is you're gathering for. Gather feedback on actual behaviors. Provide the perspectives of direct reports. 
and reveal the communication blind spots. So we all have blind spots. And when I say a blind spot, if you are looking at the screen right now and you're looking directly at me, you have blinkers. You can't see what's to the left. You can't see what's to the right. You can only see what's in front of you. And a lot of times we're so focused on what we are trying to say, you can't see the other perspectives that are around you. So by having formal reviews, it really helps to reveal those communication blind spots that you are not actually seeing. So some of the best ways to find out whether you're communicating effectively is to take a coworker out for lunch and ask them how you can improve. Don't take a close friend. They will be polite. They will want to please you. Take a coworker instead that you're not very close to. Collect behavioral evidence. Start making notes when you observe your own communication. Note the behaviors mentioned in the feedback that people give you and write down and record the causes because you will find that there is a pattern of things that you do without really thinking. And you can then catch yourself the next time you do it if you have recorded it down on paper. And you can then make improvements. Some of the improvements you can make with your communication is to slow down. Slowing down with how you're speaking, speaking at a slower pace, and slowing down to listen, like I said before. So we're gonna break for a small little exercise. I don't know how many people we have in the room. And then we will finish off with the 12 ways that you can improve your communication style. I'll give you a summary of 12 things that you can take home. So if we break up the room, does everybody know each other or is everybody um, unfamiliar with each other? Um, no, I don't think everyone knows here each other. Okay. We have a large group of participants. So let's break up into two groups. I think there's eight people. Uh, yep. If there's four people in a group, the exercise is this. I want you to write it down. So when we go into the groups, you'll remember what I said. You are going to each introduce yourselves to the other person, other people in the group. And the other people in the group have to remember your name. And when we come back after the introductions, group one will say the names of everybody who was in the room. I don't want you to write the names down. I want you to try and remember those names. We will do it once. Then I'll show you a way that you can remember the names more effectively and we'll do it a second time and we'll see what happens. So I want us to time this to one minute. So you have to talk really fast. Each person will say their name. And after a minute, we're going to come back into the room. Let's give it a go and see what happens. So we are doing this for five minutes, right? No, one. One minute oh, one for minute. round one. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And we'll okay. do it a bit longer for round two. Awesome. Um, Jeremy, I'm doing the breakout in that case. Okay. Uh, Getrud, would you like to be in one of the rooms as well? I might as well, yeah. Okay. I'll be observing. Sure. Okay, guys, you have a minute. Introduce yourselves. Hello, everyone. I'm Shinja from Bangladesh. Next, Hi. come on. Hi, my name is Jeremy and I'm from Malaysia. Next. Hello, everyone. I'm Rumi from Bangladesh. Next. How many people do we have? Is that everyone? Oh, uh, there's one more. Umar. Umar, are you there? Unmute. Say who you are, where you're based. Hello. Yes, right now I am on mute. And this is Omar Zishan from Pakistan. Okay. So we're going back to the room. Now you have to remember each other's names, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right.
Wow, how did it go? It was fast. <laughs> now, that was really fast, right? Yes. I want everybody to now say the names of the people who are in the room. We'll start with the people who were in my group. One by one, tell me the names of the people who are in the group. In my group, there was Jarmi and Romi from Bangladesh, Jarmi from Malaysia, and Umarjishan from Pakistan. Excellent. Next person. Jeremy? Um, in my group, that was Shimi from Bangladesh, Rumi from Bangladesh, and Umar from Pakistan. Okay. Next. So those who just got back to the main room, uh, we are just going around the room asking if you remember the names of the people who were in your breakout room. So um, Fozia, would you like to share? Who were in your room? Tamim Mohal Sen, Erika Shokan, Taman Islam, Ichi, they were in my room. Okay, how about Tamim Do you remember the names of the people in your room? Noshin Fozia Tasmim and Eric also. Awesome. Eric, would you like to go next? It's a memory game, sort of. It is. <laughs> Eric, are you here with us? Maybe he's uh, yeah, muted. Yeah, probably. Rumi, would you like to take a shot at this? Yeah, in my group, there were Umer, uh, Shimi, and I forgot, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Okay. okay. Now that exercise is an example of what happens when you meet other people that you don't know. And they say that the sweetest sound in somebody else's ears is their name on your lips. It's very important to remember people's names. Now, the way that I remember people's names is by association. So everybody was from a different country. I look at the country. I listen into which country they're from. If I'm meeting people in a physical environment, I actually look at their face. So I would say, Shumi has a shiny face in my head. There would be something maybe that she's wearing that makes me remember what she was like. Fauzi has got the, um, the glasses. Fauzi cited Fauzi. I would... I think of something quirky, something funny about the way the person looks that can help me remember the name. Does that make sense? And another way that you can remember people's names really easily is when they introduce yourself, themselves to you, and especially if you're shaking hands and they say, hi, my name is Gertrude. I say immediately back, hi, Gertrude. Wonderful to meet you. Where are you from? So the minute you repeat the other person's name, it sticks in your head. Does that make sense? I even do this when I'm communicating with people on the phone. So most of my work is online. A lot of times I'm meeting with people and when somebody answers the phone, for example, at a medical center and they say, hi, this is Jenny. Um, Glen Iris Medical Center, how may I help you? I normally have a pen and paper and I just write down the person's name. And then I say, hi, Jenny, this is Gertrude. So when you personalize your communication, even if it's on the phone and you're not seeing the other person, they feel like you've seen them. They feel like they've, you've, they've heard you. And it's a very powerful tool to use when you are polled calling. So when I was creating my business in New Zealand, I had to phone different medical centers to recruit doctors and find places to, to place them. And I realized that the lady who picks up the phone was more important than the person who owned the business. If I was nice to the receptionist, she would be.
So that's very, very important when it comes to communicating with people, be it in person or offline. Now, I'm gonna do one more little exercise with you guys. And it's an exercise about body language and how you can find out whether somebody is lying or telling the truth. And this is how we're going to play the game. Again, we're going to break out into two groups and we are going to play a game called drop the ball. Now with drop the ball, one of you is holding the ball. So I don't know if we can allocate the first person in each room so I can say who it is. Shumi, can you do that? Um, yeah, sure. So in so, the first breakout, we have Eric, Fozia, Tamanna, and Tamimu. Do we have a right. volunteer? So Eric is going to be holding the ball in the first group. And who's in the second group? Um, so it's you, Jeremy, Rumi, and Shimi. Jeremy can hold the ball in the second group. So imagine that we are sitting in a circle and the person holding the ball is going to walk around the circle. You know, the game we used to play as children and everybody's got their hands behind them and you're going to drop the ball in their hand. And the others have to guess who has the ball. And the way you drop the ball is you're going to go into the chat on Zoom. You find the person who you're going to give the ball and you say you have the ball. The others have to watch each other's faces and try and guess who has it. Okay. So let's do it. And then I'll, we'll come back and I'll explain how you can tell when somebody is lying. All right. That sounds like a fun oh. game. Um, <laughs> Itrud, how long do you want this to be, the breakout? Um, again, this one can be a little bit longer. Let's do it for two minutes. Two minutes, okay. Awesome. Okay, so who has the ball here? Jeremy, you have yep. the ball? Okay, so... Um, the others have to come on video for this to work. So Rumi and Shimi, can you um, switch on your videos just for a minute? It, it, it doesn't really work if we can't see your faces. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so Jeremy, drop okay. the ball. Do I? Look at each other's faces and try and guess who Jeremy is giving the ball. Okay. You just go into the chat and say to the person you're giving it to, you have the ball. All right, done. Now we have to guess who has it. And I think, Shubi, you have the ball. <laughs> Am I correct? Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's the end of the game. And it's just because I know how to read faces. Shumi, you smiled immediately. And I knew it was you. So when we go back into the main room, we're going to do this again with everybody else. So look out for people's faces. Sometimes somebody will twitch. Something on their face will change for you to know that it's them, okay? And when we go back into the main room, we're going to do it with a whole group together, all right? Okay, and we'll do it for a bit of a longer time so everybody gets a feel of how this works. Let's go back. It's real fun. <sighs> okay, how did everybody find that? How did you experience what we just did? I want some feedback. People in room two. And let's, um, let's go into gallery view because we're going to do it again with everybody together. So I can see there's six people back. 
are the others yeah. have dropped yeah, off? Yeah, we still have three more people who are joining in 10 seconds. Okay. So we'll wait for them and then I'll explain how valuable this little exercise is. And especially now during COVID, when a lot of things are being done online, a lot of teams are meeting online and you want to check in and make sure everybody is okay. So everybody's back, right? Okay. Now the game only works when you are on camera. So I'll ask uh, Tamana, Taminu and Eric to switch on your videos and we're going to play the game again. Now I will have the ball. I'm going to drop it into somebody's hands virtually and you need to guess who it is. So look at people's faces. Look out for their body language and try and see who has the ball, okay? Here we go. Okay, who wants to guess who has the ball? When you guess, if you get the answer right, the game stops. If you get it wrong, you have to switch off your video so you're in the background. Who wants to guess first? Anyone, come on. Tamana. Who said that? Me. Tommy Mul said. Oh, me, it was All me. Right. Incorrect. So you can switch off your video. Next person. I think it was Ozia. <laughs> <laughs> now you're correct. Okay, come back on video because we're going to do it again. Yay. Why did you know which was her? Um, I saw a big smile in her face. <laughs> <laughs> but you two know each other well, right? Yeah, I think so. There was so. something that gave her away. Probably. Okay. So now, Fozia, it's your turn. You have the ball. You're going to drop it into somebody else's hands. And again, we're going to guess who has the ball. Eric, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming on video. And let us know when you've dropped it. I dropped the ball. Drop the ball. Okay, so one of you has it. Who would like to start and guess who has the ball? Anyone? Unmute if you're muted so we can hear you. I think Romy. Is that correct, Romy? Romy, do you have the ball? No, actually, I don't have the ball. You don't have it. So, Shimi, you're out. Close your video. I, Next person. I, I, think, I think it's Romy. You think it's who? It's me. But no, it's not me. Wrong All guess. All right. So, Romy, you're out. Next. I think it was Eric. Who do you think it is? Eric, Eric. Eric has it. Is that correct, Eric? Eric, do you have the ball? Um, no. No? Fozia, is, is, does he, Eric have the ball? I know he's getting with sound. Okay. Fozia? Uh, no, Eric doesn't. Eric doesn't. Okay, so you're out, Tamini. Okay. Who else wants to guess? Who has the ball? Jeremy. 
Uh, I think it's Tamana. Tamana, do you have the ball? Yes. Okay, now all of you come back on video. And Jeremy, how did you guess that it was her? What was it that she did that you observed that told you that it was her? Oh, uh, she's the last one that has not been picked. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> was she? No. Oh, okay. She was. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy did some math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I wanted you guys to learn this little game because you're going to be communicating with your teams online. And you need to learn how to read the body language of the people in your teams. There could be somebody who's very quiet, who's not very outright, who doesn't really speak up, but they have something to say, they're too shy to say it. You need to learn to read the room, even if it's virtual. And make sure that you're including all of your team members in the conversation. Does that make sense? So this is a beautiful exercise. The other thing about this exercise is that there is a lot of cyber crime happening in the world because of COVID. A lot of people are having to trust random strangers online. We're connecting with people we don't know. When you meet someone in person, it's very easy to tell with their body language whether they're telling the truth or not. There is a TED talk by a detective. Her name is Jennifer. She's an FBI detective who did a very interesting TED talk on what she learned by observing the body language of murderers. I want you guys to Google that TED talk. I will send it to, show me, I'll find it and send it to you. And she said very simple things like somebody could be talking and their shoulder keeps twitching. When people are lying, their bodies give them away. So you guys need to learn how to trust people online when you're having conversations to read their body language and make sure that you are involving and getting everybody to participate in meetings, in conversations, in group discussions. So thank you for playing the game. I hope you had fun. Come back into gallery mode and give me feedback about these two little games before we finish off with a summary. Can you put everybody on gallery mode again? Yes. And give me some feedback of what you've taken either from this exercises or from my presentation so far before I give you the summary. I loved it. This was great. Um, and yeah, somebody, I think Shimi said in the chat, like we can play it with friends as well virtually. It's, it's a fun game, but there's also a learning to it. Yes. It's a great way to connect with friends, to connect with family. Um, I've had to use a lot of ice breaking type of tools when I'm having my meetings and you can Google some of these on YouTube so that before you start a meeting, have an icebreaker so that people can relax and laugh and do something funny just to warm them up before you start a meeting. And it gets people to get to know each other as well, especially the name game. When people don't know each other in a group, it's very important. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. So I can see we have about 19 minutes left. I'm going to give you a summary before we do a recap. And in the recap, I'm wanting feedback from all of you, the top three things that you've taken in. I'll share my screen again. And in this summary, I'm going to highlight on 12 ways that you can improve your communication skills instantly. So number one, show respect and show appreciation. The two go hand in hand. People already progress more effectively when you show them respect. Number two, listen actively. 
Active listening is when you stop thinking about the next meeting you're going to go to or something you want to do tomorrow, being fully present to the person who's in front of you. People want to know that they're being heard instead of just focusing on formulating a response. Remember what I said that sometimes people start to think about the answer back to what somebody is saying without actively listening to what that person is saying. Number three, ask questions and paraphrase. They say that people who are inquisitive and ask questions are very intelligent. If you pretend like you know everything, you're going to miss out from what other people can actually teach you. Asking questions not only will help you to understand what the other person is saying, but it indicates that you're actually listening and you're interested in what they're saying. It opens up the conversation and it signals to the other person that you see them, you hear them, and you understand them. Number four, eye contact. So remember, eye contact is culture specific. Take into account the person you're talking to, whether they're not looking at you because it's a cultural thing for them not to have direct eye contact, or if there's something else that's going on. So sometimes you could be talking to somebody and it's really important. It could be your boss. It could be your supervisor. It could be your teacher at school. And they're busy looking outside the window while you're talking to them. It shows that they're not interested. They're distracted. Their focus is not on you. Number five, pay attention to body language. So remember what I was saying? 80% of your communication is in the body language, not the words that are coming out of people's mouths. So your nonverbal and not nonverbal and non-written cues often reveal more than you actually think. So remember when you're communicating, it's not just about the words. It's about how you are gesturing. A lot of times when somebody's got their arms crossed, that is a very closed way of communicating. You're not really interested. Sometimes when people are talking to you, you have your hands down, you're relaxed. So those kind of gestures can say a lot to the other person you're talking to. Number six, get rid of conversation fillers. You really have to learn how to improve your speech, learn how to cut them out. One of the things I've noticed with young people today is you use the word like so much. It is so crazy. I don't know how it started, but I've noticed with young people, it's like, ah, oh, and then, mm, and then, ah, oh, like, like, like. Record yourself speaking so you can catch it, then you can avoid it. Record yourself speaking, transcribe the audio, see how many times you say like. Number seven, be brief but specific, both in your verbal and your written communication. A lot of times people will say something and they will waffle for five, 10 minutes trying to say a very, very simple thing. So learning the art of being brief and specific is something that will really help you, especially when you're communicating via email. Don't ramble. Number eight, put away all your devices. Another vice that you young people have. My kids, when they were teenagers, would be sitting in the sitting room next to each other and they would be sending each other messages on their phones i'm like what are you guys up to you're sitting right next to your brother why don't you just talk to him put away your devices be present number nine validate others thoughts and feelings when somebody's feeling a certain way they feel that way for a reason and even if you won't react the same way, it's important to acknowledge the emotions that they're experiencing. You don't have to agree with that person to validate them. 
You make them feel important by simply letting them know that you hear what they're saying and you accept their perspective. Number 10, never talk over people. There's some people who before you finish a sentence, they're already jumping in with their comment, with their question. Wait until the other person has stopped speaking. Bite your tongue. It's okay to have pauses be between conversations. If you talk over somebody, it's very disempowering to that other person because you're taking control of the conversation. So be very aware of talking over other people. Number 11, watch your tone. So sometimes you could answer back in a very aggressive way and it just breaks down the whole communication chain with that other person. So your tone is very important, being aware of what tone you're communicating in. And number 12, smile. Smile often. When you smile, a smile is infectious. It makes the other person smile. When you smile, it releases endorphins in your body and in the other person's body as well. You exude a positive attitude when you smile often. So that one simple little thing can completely change your communication style for life. So that's what I wanted to share as a recap before we end our session. So we've got about 10, 12 minutes to go. Now I want us to open up the floor and I'm expecting each of you to give us some feedback, what you've learned, what you've observed, something you didn't know. Let's just open that up for dialogue so we can start anywhere, anybody who's got a question, something to say, just put up your hand and Shumi will, will pick you to, to jump in with your questions. I'd comment. like to say something. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, so and, I'd and, like to... And before you start saying what you want to say, say your name, say which country you're based so that everybody can remember each other after this round as well. All right. Okay, so my name is Tamanna Islam Ricci. I'm from Bangladesh. So I just wanted to say that um, every single uh, point was really important for us. I think it works for our day-to-day -to -day life and also our professional life. It will be very helpful on that platform. And um, I love that game. And also I really uh, agree with that point that um, remembering others' names and while we're speaking, if we uh, just um, address them by their name, then it really, um, uh, it really uh, keeps an impact on the conversation. That's I have noticed before also. So thank you so much for all those, uh, all those things that you have taught us today. It was a great session. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And Tamana, in future, when you ever get an opportunity to speak, Come on video, let people see your beautiful face. Don't hide behind the camera, okay? Yes, sure. Sorry, today I'm going through some problems. So next okay. time I'll definitely turn the camera. Okay. All right, I totally understand. Thank you. Who's next? Um, I wanted to ask a question, excuse me. Um, hi, hello. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Mohammed. And uh, I'm from Iran, one of the most popular countries in the world right now. Um, okay. I want to ask you a question. Um, you just mentioned that uh, when we are having a conversation with someone, um, we need to maintain eye contact and we need to smile. But sometimes you just don't like a person, but you have to work with them. How can you smile at them? Like You, you just can't. When you see that person, you're like, no, I, I don't want to. So how can I make myself to smile at that person? Okay. Now, in any work setting, whatever you're going to do in life, you're going to meet people you like, you're going to meet people you don't like. And part of being successful in any job, in any environment, 
is the ability to put your differences aside and find a way to relate to people, whether you like them or not. So it becomes a skill. You know, I was talking about my boss. I was working in apartheid South Africa. He was a racist. He didn't like black people and he showed it to me every single day. And if I had allowed him to get to me with his attitude, I would have quit my job two days after starting. But what I decided to do is to turn it into a joke. It used to hurt me. I would go into the toilet and cry every day with the things he did to me. But I turned it into a joke and I decided to kill him with kindness. And people would laugh at him when he did what he did. I would say, yes, Jack, I take my tea with two sugars, thank you. And I'll cross my legs like a lady and everybody would laugh. And I broke his behavior by making it funny. Are you with me? So you can change the other person without being rude. Just being lighthearted, you don't lose anything by doing that. You actually gain. Does that make sense? Yes, and most yes. organizations would rather hire somebody who knows teamwork, how to work with other people in teams, than somebody who isolates themselves. You will get hired if you're somebody who can get on with people, even if you don't have the qualifications or experience. So it's a skill you need to, to learn. Okay, I hope yes. that helps. Thank you, yes, uh, uh, kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry for your experience, I'm sorry, that's terrible. It made me tough, don't worry, <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> okay, who's next? Jimmy, I saw your hand raised at one point. Did you have a question or comment? Uh, no, I don't have a question, but uh, I just had a concern. Uh, you said that we young generation use the like word so much in our conversation. So the thing is, uh, like, uh, <laughs> sorry, I can say the like. Sometimes uh, it became a tendency that we people are trying to finish every word, every of our thoughts in one sentence. That's why we maybe we try to connect with like and uh, the finish the whole sentence and whatever we are trying to say. I think uh, because that works for me as well. So yeah, how so to those, those are called filler words. They are called filler words. And the way you get rid of it is just record yourself speaking. Even if you're speaking to a friend, you've got your phone, you've got the voice recorder. Mm -hmm. When you're in conversation with someone, record yourself speaking. Then when you get home, transcribe that audio. There's a piece of free software called Otter, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. You can upload the audio to Otter. It will transcribe it. And it normally will pick up those filler words that you use. And once you become aware that you're doing it, you can eliminate it. Does that make sense? It's a nasty habit. It, it, it drives me crazy when I talk to young people and the, everything is like, like, um, um. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, when I am talking to people, so. Shimmy, you're muted. Shimmy, you're muted. So sorry. Like when I'm talking to a person, it's became a ten, it's became a habit for me that I have to finish everything, whatever I'm trying to say in one sentence. That's why I try to connect all the sentences in one line. Yeah. So you're aware of it. So you can you can change it. It's difficult when you're not aware that you're doing it. So now break up your sentences, make them shorter. That'll be the first thing. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Eric has his hand up. Eric, come on video. Hopefully his sound will, co will come through. If the sound doesn't come through, then you can switch off the video, okay? Eric, you're on mute. Can you please unmute yourself? Eric, you're on mute. Unmute yourself, Eric. You're muted. 
Actually, no, now he's not. Okay, now say something. You're good now. Ask your question. I think Eric's audio is not connected properly because I don't see the microphone sign. So Eric, your audio is not connected. Type your question in the chat. Oh no, he's back. Maybe switch off the video so that we can hear you. I think your, your bandwidth is not very good. Try again. Eric? Hello, how about now? Now we can hear you, yeah. Okay, a question. Commenting, commenting on the technique you've used, the break eyes technique that we have to be done across all of our meetings. Just be free, get to know each other. Yes, that atmosphere of uh, that, that friendly tone. Yeah, so I think that makes the technique was great. Yes, one I recommend that we use this across the meeting that we um, engage in. Okay, so I think I heard what you said. You said that it's not a question, but it's a comment. You enjoyed the icebreakers because they relaxed everybody. It was fun. People got to know each other and you're going to use this in your meetings. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, thank you for that contribution. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, your connection wasn't very good, but you're I welcome. Thank you. Feedback, everybody. We want feedback from everyone. You're not getting okay. away without saying something. Fauzia, you're, you're muted as well. <laughs> I just okay. uh, I absolutely love to this session and I have uh, I knew about body language a bit, but like I didn't <laughs> I'm using my kick. <laughs> <laughs> You're aware of it now. That's the that's the good thing. That's okay. Keep yeah. going. And <laughs> I uh, about body language as well, like I've thought of but I've never given it much thought, but I knew about it. But now I'll be more aware of it about like <laughs> using my game and the game. Yeah, it's interesting, right? <laughs> it's very interesting. You catch yourself. Yeah. And when you're able to catch yourself, you will break it. You will break that cycle of, of using like, like, like as a filler word. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank so you so that much was your, to the session. That was yeah, your biggest take home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank I'll you. For try, uh, I'll try to use the 12 ways I've learned today. It was Fantastic. brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Who hasn't given us some feedback? Yes. Hello. Yes. Again, say your name, where you are. Uh, my name is Tamimul Hussain from Bangladesh. Uh, I think I learned too many things in this session. And after this session, I thought I um, improved too many things, improve myself. So you got a lot out of this? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just a few little things that you can do for yourself so that you are heard and you hear other people more effectively. So thank you for, um, for contributing. Wonderful you. to have you here. Okay, who do we have? We have Stacy and Jeremy hasn't spoken, have you? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Uh, I'll okay. go next. So okay. yeah, so I'm Jeremy from Malaysia. Yep. Um, I thought the session was really interesting. So I've learned a lot, especially the games it was really interactive and fun. And also um, the 12 points that you mentioned at the end to summarize the whole session 
think I got a lot from that as well. Um, and I believe it will benefit me through my career. So thank you so much for, um, for teaching us all those um, things that you've said. And um, yeah, thank you so much for um, this interesting session. Absolute pleasure. I'm glad you got something out of it. Thanks, Jeremy. Wonderful. Who else do we have who hasn't contributed? So There's Stacy in Kenya. I'm not sure if Stacy goes here for the whole thing, but Stacy, do you want to share? Muhammad has shared. Who's missing? Show me. Who haven't we heard from? Yeah, I think everyone has pretty much shared except Stacy. Okay. The rest have all gone. Fantastic. So thank you guys. This was a interesting session. Uh, one more last thing, Trip. Yes. You're muted, Shimi. Oh, sorry, sorry. So the game we have played, it's really impactful for us because it's not just about uh, reading other spatial expression and their body language. So uh, in the uh, in the first class, you uh, already spoke about the empathy, like uh, how to empathize uh, other people. So I think uh, if we can keep practicing this game with our friends, we can actually interconnect this with their also the person's mental health, how they are going through, like because sometimes it's already shown in their facial expression, right? So I think it's very, I, it's helpful for our professional and personal life also, this game. It's real That's fun. Very, very true. That's very true. Thank you. I'm glad you took that away. Yeah, lastly, Gertrude, I want to say that I have also um, really had fun. I enjoyed. Um, at the same time, I found it a very learning opportunity. It was, a, it was I found it very valuable. Um, especially uh, the the slides towards the beginning where you talked about empathy and the kind of like the different kinds of empathy and the difference between sympathy and empathy and all that I, I really enjoyed the, the whole session thank you for your time fantastic the the one uh, thing that I was taught when I was trying to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy one of my mentors said to me imagine that you're on a boat and you have a friend who's seasick and they start to throw up. And when you're watching them throwing up, you start to throw up as well. So that's when you're sympathizing, you're going down to the level of the pain of the person you're with. When you empathize, you're able to be with someone without absorbing it too much. It's almost like you're watching it from a distance. It's more effective. A lot of times when we are consoling a friend, if you get too emotional, you make them feel worse. So that's how I really learned to distinguish between the two. So thank you so much, everybody. This was wonderful meeting you all, connecting with you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share what I had prepared yesterday for all of you and hopefully the ones who didn't come can get access to this recording as well. Thank you so much for giving us time twice, like, and you agreeing to even do the session at two in the morning, your time is really mind blowing. So thank you so much, <laughs> we really appreciate it. Um, especially given we know how, how busy you remain. So we really appreciate you taking the time off, out of your schedule. Thank you everybody. Have a wonderful Thank day, you. morning, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to sleep now. Bye-bye. <laughs> right, have a good Thanks. night. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you all.